Okay, what's really interesting about this problem is, is the fact that because it's using words, it's actually open to interpretation. If this was actually redone in just pure symbolic logic, it would be unambiguous. But because we're using these sentences, in actual fact, people have opened them up into interpretation. And there's one in particular which I'm really fond of. Okay, so I'm going to explain it like this. We're here at the same point where we've got all the information, someone's whispered, someone's whispered, but now the statement. So the first statement is, I don't know when Cheryl's birthday is, but I know that Bernard does not know too. If you're thinking, not logically, like just a normal person, right? Um, how do you know that Bernard doesn't know? Perhaps he told you. Perhaps when he got whispered in his ear, it wasn't a gimme, and he kind of went, oh, no, I don't know it. Somehow, Albert has gotten the information from Bernard, because that's what that statement could mean. I also know that Bernard doesn't know. Not from any deduction, basically because he's used a little bit of street sense. But what's really interesting about that, if we look at it that way, is then the first part of the statement actually makes sense. Because then he's actually saying, I don't know when Cheryl's birthday is, because I logically have deduced it from peering or looking or somehow getting information from Bernard. I know it's a bit of a stretch, but because the language is ambiguous, it is in there. You can actually convince yourself mathematically. So now in this case, that actually has logical information. It's just not like a throwaway line. He's not just being, you know, I don't know, driving home the obvious. In this case, it's actually like, I don't know when Cheryl's birthday is. There's actually now, if, if in actual fact, if in actual fact he could know the birthday, there's actually now a way for him to do it. There is a gimme. The fact that Bernard didn't say anything has actually presented a gimme on the board. On this matrix, you can see one. So, it could have been different. It could have been completely different. He could have done, he, should, he could have seen Bernard getting disappointed or whatever. He could have then, I know Bernard doesn't know, but I do. Boom! Amazing, right? But he doesn't say that. He says, I don't know either. So what information does that give us? It gives us the fact he can't have June. Because remember, he's only got information to do with months. So now, he's basically given away the fact that June is completely wiped out. Now this changes the situation from before. Because instead of having July and August as our only options, it gives us May July and August. It gives us an extra month. Now this changes things dramatically. Oh, hang on, let me change this here. So now the 17 is gone too. So now what that means is that this is actually, so this is now, I'm gonna just use the red here haphazardly, and this is good too. Okay, so what this now, so now let's look at the next part of the question, uh, next statement. So the next statement from Bernard says, I didn't know before, now I know. I didn't know before, now I know. So how could he know that? Well, if we have a look at the dates that are available, 14, okay, there's still two options. 15, two options, 16, two options, 17, there is only one option. Only one. So, if it's true, if he said I know it and he's able to tell Cheryl and everything is, you know, well, the, in actual fact, in this situation, there's only one possible answer, not three, one. So that means it had to have been 17th of August. Where does that leave Albert? I mean, he's flabbergasted. Because it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You just got that really quickly. I mean, how did you guess that? I, I had May, July, and August as, as options on the table. You just got it like that. And so what does Albert do? Well, because, because of the fact there was only one answer, he actually has to think like Bernard. So now he puts himself in Bernard's shoes. What did Bernard know? Well, Bernard knew that I knew that he didn't have the gimmies, and then I said, um, I know that he doesn't know, but I don't know either. So then in the June, and so basically he follows exactly Bernard's path, and so without using, or using the combination of the information, he can then deduce that it has to be August. And so the pair of them actually follow the same path, so we get rid of that, we get rid of that, we get rid of that. Here's the one here. So this has now gone there. So there's boo -boo, boo -boo, boo -boo. Let's get rid of all these. All these options are gone. So then that becomes zero, that becomes zero, and this becomes one. And we have a new 
possible answer. August 17. In an alternate universe where people aren't logicians, where people say things and they don't mean exactly what it is they want to say, like the real world, you get a solution like this. And that's the difference with these problems. The problems that you get trained to do as a mathematician, we know what's going on, we understand it, we can turn it into the maths, but if you're not a mathematician, August 17, sounds plausible to me. 